Welcome folks to our next adventure. Today, myself, Gav Cuthbertson and Adam Slack, we ventured up to the Bristol Channel. Now we've got very strong easterly winds. So with that in mind, we've had to pick our venues correctly because obviously a lot of the channel is very exposed with, e with the easterlies. Now, the Pacific venue we've, gone, we've come to today, we've come for the reason being the headlands protecting us from the wind. So we're in for a nice day's fishing. Sun's out, we've got nice set of tides, and the focus for the day is the one and only smooth out. Now, it's our first session on the smuts this year, and there's been a lot of, I've been watching over the charter boats coming out of the Bristol Channel, and there seems to be a lot of smooth out about out there. So what we're in hopes for, to see a few of them come to the shoreline. Now, I know I've seen a couple of small, smaller fish, nothing massive, but the venue you're at today, you have got the, you've got the chance of picking up a 20 pounder. I mean, deep water, far out, and uh, fingers crossed we can, we can do the business today. That's the main focus, guys. So I'll go through the rigs a little bit later on, and we'll, uh, you can see the rigs we're using. Baits is just normally the simplest ones we, we, we you, you would use for targeting smooth out. Got squid and peeler crab. I don't think you can really beat it. Now, squids are, uh, on its own is, is a bait I would use later on in the year, really. Um, crab specifically using it now, but uh, we've got we've got a bit of both, so we'll m mix and match it. You have got a chance of bass here. You got a chance of form, form backs here. You got a chance of conger eels here. And um, yeah, let's see what we can get out. But uh, let's get on with the session. Okay, guys. So what I'm going to do first is go through the rig. Now, um, I've just been handed this by uh, my good friend Gav, and uh, he picked it up off a of Luke Johns for our very own single adventures, who has built the SKM modes with a built-in lead lift. Now, any boys that's fishing the Bristol Channel and that, the reef marks especially, I always use a lead lift because it helps lift the, bed, uh, the lead up off the seabed, and nine times out of ten, you get it all back all the time. And at the end of the day, if you hook into a fish, sometimes it pull you in a snag, but nine times out of ten, the lead's always going to be up off the seabed bed for the pressure what the fish pulling against as you're bringing it in so absolutely cracking little invention there what I'm going to try on, on rod today but I'm also going to use the rotten bottom um, with my basic leads because if I the, that's what I said the venue we're fishing at the moment we've got chance of getting those big 20 pound smuts and if you got one on and lost it in as it pulled you into the reef or into a snag you'd absolutely be gutted so I ought at the end of the day, it's always worth losing that lead and getting your gear back. And obviously, at the same time, um, it doesn't leave loads and loads of line out there if you get if you had to get go for the break, um, and it helps get the fish to the shoreline. But I'm using a basic pulley rig, about two foot long, nothing big. I've got um, Maxima 80 pounds um, with a imp on the end, rubber beads, 100 pound cocks and raw swivel, and then I've got a 40 circle work on the top with a 40 chinu on the bottom bottom absolutely perfect we're going to put some prime crab and uh, squid baits on that today and that's pretty much it guys obviously rotten bottoms I'll go through in a minute but I, I like I prefer the breakaway um, rotten bottom release clips these little red gadgets there absolutely perfect work every time and um, yeah as long as you set them I'll go through that a bit later on but little hints and tip from ads now he picked that up online and uh, it didn't cost him an arm and a leg. We'll get him to do a little talk how much it was. But he's got that filled with little bits. Now, absolutely perfect for sessions like this. We're up on the channel, lose a bit of gear, and you think, I need to make a rig. Absolutely perfect. Now, he's got everything in there. Swivels, beads, uh, imps, rotten bottom release clips, every, um, lead clips, uh, cascade swivels. He's got pretty much everything for all, all, the, all the fishing he needs. So if he's placing, he can make something up. If he's smooth rounding, he can make something up. If he's bremen, he's got stuff in there to do and cater for all types of fishing. And uh, it's definitely one of those things worth having all the time. You know what I mean, I know guys like Stu Norris and that. They carry uh, rod, rod. I'm not one of them to be honest. I, I, I take the minimum amount of stuff I need, and I'm still very, very heavy. Now the mark we come to today, it's big walk, and um, obviously with the camera gear and that as well, it's uh, it's a lot of weight. So I try and minimise that. But when you've got a mate like Adam with all that gear, you don't really need nothing else, do you? But at the moment it's half tied down and we're about to get onto the mark and uh, hopefully we can see a few fish out. So let's get into it. Right folks, so basically what we're doing here is uh, forming a chain. As with everything with fishing, you've got to be safe. And um, I've had a nasty slip at this bit here before. Gone to jump when it's wet. I've not wore studs today, because we're just talking about it then, because sometimes using studs 
it can be worse depending on the rock you're on. So just chain everything across and you've got your hands free. Just work as a team really, military operation. Sure in return I'll do that, leave down my fish. But it is very slippy. So that little bit, just a little bit he's coming down on there now. You've got your hands free, it's, um, it's open you at the end of the day isn't it? Like ice. I'll go that way, mate. Oh. Okay, folks, so a uh, little bit of a reef out in front of where we are at the moment. To it totally uncovered, we're going to fish one rod each, so we'll probably just set the tripods up and uh, get the party rolling. Just chuck a, two couple of tripods out there, get your rods, one rod set up, and while the other one's out fishing, we're obviously using the ratchet. So you're obviously fishing with smooth bound, you want to allow them to take. Obviously your rod, the last one you want to see is your rod go sea bound. But um, lovely day for it, see if we can get one out. First things first, get the uh, tripod set up. Very sad to hear uh, the pass away of uh, the legendary Ian Goats. He passed away yesterday, um, thoughts go out to his family and friends. It's a uh, real ambassador for sea angling and uh, yeah, a great loss really, but um, yeah, nightmare. Always seems to take the big ones, doesn't it? But um, let's get these rods set up here a minute. Just uh, got to set me first rod, rod up, and um, I got new <laughs> I got new line on it. So I'm going to probably use this one here first, as he's pretty much set up, ready to go, and get the other rod in then at least. Lovely day for it. Very slippy on these rocks. Very slippy. First one set up now. So as with everything, I've got my clip there. Okay, so we're down on the reef. Little uh Crab bait straight on. Adam's all set up ready to rock and roll. These crab absolutely prime. We got them last night and um, they're just raging, ready to go. I'm going to cast out to the left hand side of me now. He's out there. First cast of the day. You can see that smooth round. And here he is, the Wanderer returns. We met at five this morning. Geff Durham was supposed to be here in a car park. He overslept. You had a night, good night fishing last night. He's on the mark now. I'm glad he turned up because he bought the squid. So 
the first bait there. What's the crab bait? That's right. You alright, Circle up on, up on the top, doing his thing. These nets are ideal, guys, especially for your tripods. <laughs> so let's clip him up now. One of the first things I do, especially these bottom, bottom release kit clips, is just move it up slightly towards the top. It's guaranteed it's going to come off then. Well, that's, uh, that's me ready to rock and roll, so let's get first cast out. Right, so here's a rig, as I said, basic pulley rig. Bit of Peter Crab on the bottom, rotten bottom release clip from um, Breakaway Gemini. Sorry, they're Gemini ones, and I've got uh, seven ounce lead on there now. Big crab bait, chinny on the bottom, circle work on the top. Let's see if we can get one out. I'm not going to hit this. Set the other rod up a minute. Ratchet set on that one. M427 SUs, as I said, with uh, heaven casting specials. Luke Johns has uh, kindly uh, converted these reels into something a bit special because he's put side, plate, uh, side mags on them. So those big knobby mags, not, not a great fan. Perfect reels, but um, just don't like the uh, big knobby mag on the side of my wrist all the time when I'm fishing. What I've found is Fishing this mark over the years, some of the lads that I've come up with before in the past with, when they're, a lot of the lads were on here today, they're obviously they're all big hitters, they all blast the lead out, but a lot of the guys I've brought up in the past, some of which aren't big hitters, not necessarily casting that far out, but seem to get in the runs straight away when, when we're belting them out and not getting the runs. And what I found is 60, 70 yards, just as it obviously comes off the reef and straight onto them is this perfect place to really be putting the bait because those smuts aren't out in that open area they're out in between what we're fishing over now trying to pick up the crab sauce and obviously that's what I found anyway so the same as a lot of the fishing I do is always worth putting one out close and if you can hit it, hit it out as far as you can and uh, obviously testing different areas and stuff like when we were placing the other week the fish didn't seem to be out of distance we were dropping back and dropping back and in the end you were literally just over it, like lobbing it 30 40 yards out and that's where the fish were so it's um it does go to show sometimes let's get this uh not done not being rude and put me back to you it's just an easier way of um when my rod set up Oh, 
Okay, so I've got a spider etch knot on that. I've got scissors somewhere. I've got them there. A lot of people ask the question when they're first starting out on fishing and stuff. How long should you have your leader? Well, a lot of people would do it differently. But I always like to make sure I've got it around at least four or five times around the spool. So I'll, I'll simply make sure the line's sort of there, tighten the drag. And then what I'll do is... Uh, Wind it on to so my knot, so I've got my leader knot over here. My leader knot's on the model, I've got it into the centre of the spool. Come around once, twice, three times, four times. I want to come around five times a lady as they're about to sing in the background then. Once, twice, three times a lady. So um, that's basically set up there then. Nice bit of vocals there, wasn't it, Ads? And that's basically it. Now, that is brand new line on there. Last thing I'm going to do is be hitting that. I'm going to wet it in first. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my lead link on. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to lob another cast out in a minute. Tide's pulling it around like it should be. The tide is running right to left at the minute. And as it floods, it will f flood from left to right. He's quick at covering so didn't he? <laughs> Little sly one. With these videos, we're trying to include some more of the banter because a lot of the behind the scenes stuff you don't get to see. And a lot of it, like uh, earlier on, I'm doing a bit of filming and Adam decided to break wind. I might even include a bit of it in the, in the, in the outtakes in a minute. But I'm there doing me bit and all of a sudden all I hear is a great big fire. And that's the last thing you want to be hearing when you're watching a fishing production. But it just goes to show some of the humour that goes into it from the lads. He's got a nice big cheesy grin on his face there. I would be proud of that one. Probably the, the most famous fart he's ever done. <laughs> oh, you've done some good ones, have you? But, um, yeah, that's what it's about, guys. Fishing's about having fun. And if you're not having fun with it, there's no, no point doing it. And to be honest, I learned that probably about two or three years ago, because a lot of the fishing I've done when I was younger, with obviously first starting out, out, you're having fun with your mates and all stuff like that. And then when I started doing, like, the more serious side with the specimens and going out on my own all the time and like the club fishing and stuff like that it takes away the fun of it and then obviously when Gavin joined and Adam joined and uh, Rob and obviously Geffen and that all, all very close like good friends and stuff and to be honest some of the trips we've had and you've walked away just laughing your belly's hurting so much because of laughter after the trip that outweighs the fishing to me and that's what it's about I'm not, I'm not getting any, any younger it's about creating memories and having good times and if you see a few fish along the way sometimes you're not going to catch like last week i sure, <laughs> sure got it from the lads not catching a gilt head but the week before it was i had a few fish you know what i mean it's part parcel one i'm fish. open adam blanks today you had one fish <laughs> i'm out open adam blanks today yeah. he's good at pulling those little ones out but when it comes to those monsters he's got to leave it to us boys but uh, we'll soon see no he's a good angler british record holder on two species my ad you don't hear about the one, but we'll soon mention it now. British shore record holder, small eyed ray, and he's actually British shore record holder on the Orcod as well. We'll get him to talk about that in a minute because it was Ellen for fights over here. But I'm gonna get I'm gonna get a rig on this now, guys. And uh, we'll get on with the production. So um what I'm gonna do now is get this rig on again. And uh, I'm gonna start fishing that uh, lead lift as the tide starts to flood. So I'm gonna use the, um, break, uh, I keep calling them breakaway, but they're not, they're Gemini. Then what I'll do, I always keep a little, or like tw old 20 pound lines. So when you're like getting rid of your lines and that, I know a lot of it gets ditched, but it's always worth keeping a little bit because it, it, it's absolutely perfect for what I'm about to do. So you've got that there, so all I'm doing, and a lot of people will lose like 12 or 15, and sometimes it's, what I try to do is balance it to what you're using. So I've got 20 pound line on my main reels now, so I'm gonna use 20 pound line on my rotten bottom. 
and it will go. You don't want it easy enough so you're going to lose your lead every time. But if you're in a slat snag, you want to be able to pull it and break it, and that's that's the most important thing. Cut a bit off. So what I do is I get my thumb like that, and I just do a first loop. And I'll get two thumbs around there now because it'll pull it down to go the thumb again. See there, so I've got about an inch in between. And then what I'll do again then is I do exactly the same now. Pull it down like that, so I've got three knots in that. Yeah. Once I've got the three knots in that, I'm going to set my lead. Like so. If they're smooth round here, we'll get them. Okay, you can only try. We're out, we're actually targeting a smooth round, so that's all you can do, guys. And unfortunately, with smooth round fishing, they've got to be there. You know what I mean? If you catch one, there's a good chance you're gonna catch a few. But it's finding them. So if we were to get them off the venue we're on today, there's a good chance we'd come back on this set of tides tomorrow and we would get them again or we would go left or right. Now it's a building tide, so I would go more to my right and start making my way up the channel. As the tides start to drop, I start making my way down the channel. It's about using your nugget at the end of the day sometimes, you know what I mean? And, and it does pay off, you know what I mean? It does pay off. So, three, four, five, six, six times round through, the bottom knot, a bit of lubrication, and away you go. That's all set up now. All right, so it's simple. I link it over, I like to fold it round so it just like creates a little bit of a loop so the line don't get in the way. And then it basically sits in like so, okay. Gav's my cast now, so I'll go through this in a minute, but that's basically the rig, guys. So. I'll go on to the Peter Crab now, let Gav cast out. Alright, so just peeling the crab there now. Alright. Said before a lot of people like using the legs now. Not necessarily I like to use them for smooth rounding. And um, I'm gonna try and take away all the crunch off the crab. I'm gonna then get the bait elastic ready and I'm just simply going to cut this crab in half right and then uh, bind them onto the hook so I'll put them through like that point out just bind them on spread it up because I've used a snail knot on my top circle we'll talk a little bit about that in a moment but the reason I like to use that especially on the smooth out and that it's a fixed knot so it, it it's not like a running panel hook where your hook can slide down to the bottom hook it's fixed and I think it's very important when you're smooth out fishing to have a fixed top knot so you've got no movement and resistance so as soon as it takes that bait it's hooking, especially with a circle as well. Now, it's going to be really the first year I've used them because I've always been happy with the chinoos. And I don't know why I've done it really, because I've never ever lost a fish with the double chinoos. But it's something which I've looked at and I've just, at the end of the day, if you can improve something, especially with your fishing and stuff, it's definitely worth doing. And to me, that circle, especially if you get a big one on there, that ain't going nowhere. The offset of the point goes back on. Obviously, you're not going to strike into that fish. You're going to just leave it back and pull into it so that hook does its trick. But that's an absolutely perfect bait for that. Get a little close-up shot of that now, quickly. As you can see, that's that's literally all I'm using, guys. It's my biggest one. And that hook's right out of that bait there now. Hopefully, we can get a smut on it, eh? Ready to go. Not the biggest rigs in the world, you know what I mean? Some people use them longer. Up a channel, I like to use really short pulley rigs. At the end of the day, it's gonna do its thing a lot quicker. And um, yeah, that's, that's the rigs I like to use. A lot of the lads use different hooks, different methods. Adam's gone for a longer pulley rig. It's basic same rain rig you'd use up there for the fornies and that, but that's what I like to use. So let's get him out there.
second rod out. You need to go slightly more right and left than that really. Little knot on my left rod. Definitely not what I wanted. I reckon it's a small conger eel. It'll stop now. Coming down to low water. The time exactly. Half 11 to low water. Right, so we're looking at, got an hour and a half down to low, it's a fairly big tide today, but uh, the venue we're fishing, it can fish well over neeps and it can also fish well over springs, but it's just if they're there or not. Come down with Adam one winter, Adam and, Adam and uh, me and Adam come up and Rob and Gav come up a bit later on and uh, I said to Adam I need a big cod he'll remember it and we're fishing exactly where we are now side by side and I belted this bait out was it here? it was here wasn't it mm. yeah it was and uh, double squid bait two eight are worked and uh, running up and over rod's gone over dropped slack and it, as it's been running up and over perfect because it will hopefully gut hook the fish and uh, slammed over, started taking line, get into it, nod, nod, perfect cod bite. And uh, literally got it all the way here, stayed deep all the way in, straight up to the, as it starts dropping off, and it come off just underneath me. I was gutted. But I know from the past years, like 80s and 90s, we had some fantastic cod fishing up here. And I would have liked to have fished it then, to be fair. You always hear the old stories, don't you, about back in the day of the uh, of the Bristol Channel. But there is big ones still caught, you know what I mean? They, they turn up all over the place. Half the time now it's it's potluck, it's not fish you're going to specifically go out and target. Um, it's just one of them things where you can put yourself in the right place and if oak, for oak one comes along. I mean, and that's probably one of the main many joys of the Bristol Channel. Like recent re recent months, we've seen a lot of blonde rays off the reefs. I had guys messaging me and that saying I can't believe it, they're all the way up the reefs and that. You've been there for years, you know what I mean? I know, especially this that time of year, that you normally get them coming up through there. I, was, I remember going on one uh, March and um, we had one and caught them, we were Will and Zari on, on uh, Shirt and Reefs, caught on Phil. And uh, yeah, we thought it was a big form back, happened to be a big blonde, but they, I don't know why, but they sometimes, for some reason that time of year, they venture right up. Like later on in the year, you wouldn't see a blonde up that far. But it's, uh, it's crazy really to think how far they actually do come up, right up past mine and onto the reefs and that. It's, um, it's totally different ground, isn't it, than the, what they really go for. But in between the reefs and that, there is clean patches of sand. And I always think, especially where we go fishing for blondes, they're not necessarily all over the clean ground. There is rough going through and um, yeah, there's obviously a reason why they're up there that time of year. I'm going to bring that one in now. He's been out there long enough. I don't think you're going to see anything to that tide start pushing in there. Oh, There's no tide, is there?
Bait line. Why? Is that the first one you cast out? Yeah. Untouched, guys. I don't know if you heard what Adam said then, but it's a very good point to actually fishing really. Something we both, all, all of us here, we look for is tide. Now at the moment, the rods aren't arching over. They shouldn't like, it's coming down to low water really. So the tide's starting to sort of ease off. I'm looking forward to that hot tide, hot tide starting to push hard and uh, the rod tips arching over. And as you can see, nothing's, nothing's, not even a crab's gone for that. Perfect, perfectly still on there. So what I'm gonna do, let's get another crab bait on there. I'm tempted to use a little bit of squid over low water. I might go and pinch one off with Geffen up there. And uh, see if we can get one out. See if we can get one out. What do we do? Leaving the bait up. Got a little softy there now. Loves a softy. Lovely. Get him all winded on. Every day, even if we don't get nothing today, I'll do a little production of the day because at the end of the day, fishing's about fishing. You can't win and ca you can't catch all the time. But on the tides and obviously the conditions, I think we've got a really good chance of pulling something out a bit later on. The tide starts to flood. See if we can whittle something out. But um, obviously, this this video will be now on the VIP until probably four weeks' time, and then it'll be uh, obviously the, an older video will be, then be put onto the YouTube channel. For all the guys on the YouTube channel watching this in a month's time, anybody's having troubles with. Uh, Obviously, subscribing and logging on—you you just simply got to do it from a from a um, laptop or PC or Android. Once you've done it the first time, you can then watch it on your YouTube on your iPhones. But for some reason, I don't know why um, that YouTube has decided to do it that way. Because in this day and age, iPhone I would say is probably one of the more popular phones. Saying that, I know Adam—he's got—he likes his Androids. It's an Android you use, isn't it? Loves an Android, didn't you? Mm. Binding this, I've got. I've put like a Peter and a Softy together. Cause only, that was only a small bait, and then uh, circle up, right up through the top. Oh, I thought one of them said something about a bite. Then got me going. Got me going. But, um, let's get some of that on there. Put that surf work into production. Get him working, get him working. That's nice. Keeping that hook point proud is the, more, the most important thing with these smuts. Um, you want that, obviously when they take it, you need them to, uh, those hooks to set straight away. That is a perfect bait. If I do say so myself, I don't want it in the water though. Time to set the lead. And away we go. Away we go. So I'll set him up there a minute. Set the leads. Wires all set, ready to go. I've got a big puddle next to me. And uh, it didn't look too shallow earlier on. <laughs> Not on that side. But it seems right there now. It's the only thing with crab, isn't it? It stinks. Not that all off. The only thing above doing that is when you're about to cast, but I'm not really hitting them where I am at the minute. You know what I mean? So, should be alright, boys. Should be alright. So, I'm going to cast one out now, see if we can get one out. Right, let's see if we can get one out then, boys. See if we can get one out. Got to be a bit careful on these rocks because they, very, they really are slip slippery.
See if you can get ads Gav casting on that one, ads. You got fish on? You on? Adam had a little bite then. Big Gav. White guy, it's not what I wanted. But uh, small congreal. It's took the bait which is an absolute nightmare really but uh, what I'm going to try and do is unhook him without hurting him so I've got the scourger which I'm basically going to put if he opens his mouth in like so okay. that's the first hook out and then, oh, I'll get that out of the arm. That's it. So we have a small con grill. I'm going to get it back. Trace the hell, so I'm going to put a new rig on that. Easy enough to do, especially if it's all set up. Just un unclip him. Let's clip in. <laughs> like so. Done. I'll just take the bottom, bottom of this at this end. I'll reuse the rig body. When I get back later, try a new uh, trace on him. Sharpen up the hooks. Perfect for another session. Local lad just turned up, he's got a match tomorrow. But look, looks like it was one of the Western Outcast lads, and uh, unfortunately, we've got. We've got four of us on the march, so we don't able to get down where we are. But um, I'm sure we'll find the spot, hopefully enough. As I said, it's, it's going to be one of those marks where a lot of the locals are trying to get to. And that just because it's um, sheltered, sheltered from the wind, and obviously we got up here early, make sure it's a long way for us to come up, really. We just make sure we come up early just to get the mark light. So uh, oh, locked in then. Bit of weight. Bit of weight, bit of weight, he thinks there's an eel. I'm going to go down and land him for him. Or oh, you can walk him for there, as you can. Oh, it's off. Yay! Oh, he dropped it. Yeah. He dropped it. Good. That might have been a smut. Nah. You'd Definitely be cutting not. it if it was, wouldn't you? Yeah, it wasn't. Some nice shoes there, Ads. Where'd you get them from? Uh -huh. They're actually really comfy. Where did you get them from? Uh, grubs online. These are for grubs boots. Yeah, they're, they are ugly, but they're good. Yeah. If you look over here, they do two versions. They do other ones as well. Look at them. Ideal for your feet. Look a bit grey. Snowy rock off our reserve. Classics. Oh, I've got me grubs on. Wading boots. Adam used to be in the circus. can tell why he's casting. <laughs> I'm only joking. I'm only joking. Okay, so we're basically down to low water now. Slack tide. And uh, just a couple of eels. One for Gavin, one for me. No one else had nothing yet. But uh, hopefully that flooding tide will create some tide out there and uh, get the fish feeding. That's what, the only thing you can hope for, guys, at the end of the day. Doing everything in our power is trying to pull one out. Bait after bait. Fresh prime peeler crab and squid. So fingers crossed we can, uh, we can get something out. Normally you would see a fawny, but um, 
Yeah. Let's get this one here in. Gav with another dog fish. Separates the anglers from the danglers when we are catching these fish. They must be out far now because Gav's got one. Oh, that's a proper dog. Yeah, that's a proper dog, guys. But oh yeah, Ads have been trying to date it. <laughs> oh, I don't even know what <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's Just for any any single ladies out here. He will be on what is it called? What's that dating thing you want about before? Your mum. Tinder. Tinder. So any of you young, lovely young ladies out here, this this ma male machine will be on Tinder later on. Just Is your mum uh, be on there? Look him up. My mum, I'll, I'll get her to see this, mate. There's no problem. I'll see if she wants to add a little message to you or something on Tinder. I don't think she's actually on there, but oh, we'll, um, we'll set him up. Twin, no, 30, 37 years old, male stallion, lots of money and lots of fishing gear. British record holder of two fish, may I add. So he's a bit of a celebrity around these parts. And uh, yeah, anything to say to the lovely young ladies? No. <laughs> oh, I love it. Well, the sun is shining. Sat by the Bristol Channel. Window view your head. What more can you ask for on a lovely Saturday afternoon? Just a few fish. Adam's missed a slack line bite so far. Um, me and Gav's had a fish each. At the moment, it looks like it's Adam's turn to blank for the weekend. But you never know. Let's hope you don't. Let's hope you don't. But we've all, all took in turns over the last couple of weeks. My turn last week, Gav's had the week before. It's all fishing, and it? it's all part of fishing. Can't catch all the time. But we've had a few eels out, which isn't the best. But uh, tide's starting to move a little bit now. Tips are arched over. As I said, Adam just missed a nice slack line bite. You've got two options when you go slack the liners. You have a wait and hold the rod for the tip to go over and the line to tighten, or you hit it. You wind like hell and hit it. I'm an idiot, I'm an idiot sort of man. Go right into it. Get up. <laughs> but Adam held the rod. But as he said, it's every angler's decision and if he hit it and missed it, He's got to live with that, hasn't he? But decided to hold it and things. So you never know what the right one is. But 
me, if I get a slack line, I'd just go right into it, start tightening up, you know what I mean? It's one of them. But I've missed fish many a times doing it. Also connected to many a fish doing it. So it's one of them at the end of the day. But like I said, I think the same. That was definitely a smut bite, the way, the way it went. You do get that here. It seems to slack, slack, slack line you as they're moving in. So um, yeah, let's see what it gets on. Uh, it's been a lovely day so far. Perfect choice of venue for the breeze. I mean, right overhead. You can feel it a little bit, but it's nothing real strong. But it's got a waiting game now. Few, few uh, rock climbers, rock climbing behind us. Seems to be always a favourite place to come. If they're there, we'll get them. If they're there, we'll have them. If they're not, be, it's not meant to be, is it? But uh, I've got a little, little bit of a high water adventure. We're gonna, well, I was going to use it on a different episode, but. Uh, we bought ever gear with us specifically to target a bass over high water. So if we don't get the smuts over low, there's always plan B. <laughs> Adam don't look very happy. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Gavs in the back trying to trying to make the production for you coming up with ideas it's just about but uh yeah as you can see in the background there where i'm fishing we're not hiding where we're fishing guys at the end of the day it's a bristol channel i mean there's none, none of the marks are really secret um for those that know they know you know what i mean but uh in the back end where i'm fit i'm in the horizon there behind me it's steep home and uh flat home around the corner but uh, I'd love to fish it I would love to get on steep home and fish it I mean there's a beach on the back end of it a steep shelved off beach so you would be able to get on there and fish and obviously steep home on the other side I think I think people can actually get on there and fish I think you've got a bucket here we go Geffen's in Geffen's in the Durham it might be in let's go and have a look We have Geffen Durham T900s into play. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. How big? 20 pounder? Oh, it's the biggest one of the day. I'm waiting for Gavin. <laughs> I was waiting for his face to see it. <laughs> I was waiting for his face to see it. Oh, I think. Yeah, I think. I think it might be in the league of Gav Strap. I think it may, may, may well be. Get it, you? Yeah. Oh. I wasn't risking that. No? He's not risking his T900 tip. I think he would have done it myself. No problem. He's going down anyway. What's he got there? Whoop. There it is. Yeah, it's the biggest of the day. Yeah, it's a strap. That's what, what you call a strap. Mine was a bootlace. <laughs> it was a kiddie thing. Yeah. You're always gonna, have, you're always gonna get the grief, aren't you? Always get the grief. But um, yeah, it's just one of the pests of the sea, really. We get down a little, we'll get, have a close up of those. I've seen a conger before. That's, uh, that's basically the conger guy. Is that? As you can see, he's whacked himself right up there. 
they they give a good fight when they get to 20 or 30 pounds but unfortunately where we are today the likelihood of catching that but many many years ago we come up here and uh gav um it was over high water we we're the same place we're fishing and we never had no gaff or net and uh gav had a big one on i would say over the reasonable 20 pound mark he's gone and unfortunately, I lost it for him because I had to try and pull it up out of the water by the hook, and uh, it come off. That's, that's, that's part and parcel of fishing, unfortunately. Next one in, not what we wanted once again. Very, very small dogfish. Took the crab bait. These uh, chinnies are doing the small fish, trick. Close, isn't they? But. Um, yeah, Adam's right, these small fish are, are in extremely close. I'm literally lobbing them at the minute, but uh, he's not getting much luck at all at the minute, I've got to be honest. He's casting them distance, he's chucking them in close, he's mid-range. I mean, the only people that's trying to f actually find him fish at the moment is me, Geff, and, and Gav, you know what I mean? It's just one of them, but I think he's busy stuffing his face. He's got these new little gadgets he's got from Go Outdoors. They're like, bring it over here a minute, let me show them, because they are quite good. Give him his due. He's not catching many fish, but he's sure canning. <laughs> Put that one bear back in the water. He's off to fight another day. So these are the ones he's uh, he's raving on about at the minute. These are adventure foods. You go outdoors, they're uh, 3.99 I believe. High energy, 600 carbs, pasta bolognese. So that's what he's had for dinner. But um, yeah, if you don't catch a fish, fish, at least he's had a nice bit of food while he's been out fishing today, isn't he, mate? Hmm. Wanna come in here? What for? No. How would you find them? I love them. They're yeah. brilliant. Yeah, some of them are a bit like... What, what, what flavours they do? I like the carbonara ones. Carbonaras. Oh, that would be a bit more... Yeah. yeah. That's you know nice. what it is? It's perfect for like, especially hot, like, hot food. Mm. Like fish well, that's it, isn't it? It's just a hot meal, isn't it? Yeah, it's And it? you add boiling water to it and away you go, isn't it? There you go, mate. So what's going on with the fishing front? You're not doing very well, well are you? I'm I a don't want fish, like eel, gaffs on an eel, gaffs on an eel. You struggling, if you asked yeah. other lads, I'm sure they'd rather blank than the. Uh, I did say you to you that it was your day to blank today, didn't I? In fact, I? your eel was more like a silver eel, was that small? It, I know, but I did have a dogfish to back it up. But fish is fish. You're not producing the goods today, mate, are you? <laughs> What's going on? I did say you are going to blank, didn't I? It's not over yet. No, it's only early, I know, but have you put hooks on? Yeah, I've got hooks on. Oh, right, just double mm. checking. Do you want to upsize yours? You need to up your hooks. <laughs> get those little foil things on it. <laughs> Oh, a bit of fun, right? I'm going to go and nick some of his crab again now. 16s alone, mate. Yeah, I know, mate. Oh, no. Bit of banter, boys and girls. Bit of banter. You've got to give it to him when you can, you know. I never, I never had a guilt last weekend, and these two just rim me. Literally rim me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Uh, probably the wrong <laughs> wording. Probably the wrong wording. <laughs> yeah, it's brilliant, brilliant. This is what you're missing. What they're missing on the VIP. Is that a bike gun? This is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. Do I land it from us? It's bigger than your wheel, I suppose, Dan. That's a dog. Here we have Gav with another dogfish. Separates the anglers from the danglers when you're catching these fish. They must be out far now because Gav's got one. Oh, that's a proper dog. That's a proper dog, guys. But oh, yeah, he adds if you try to date it. <laughs> oh, I don't even <laughs> 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 right, folks. Another. Dogfish. Chuck him in the uh, rock pool there. The tide starts flooding, he'll make his way out. Strip the crab. He's literally just gone out there as well. There's, a, there's, there's loads of tide there now, I've got seven ounces on and um, I'm probably going to go down to one rod in a minute, I think. Because you uh, Adam's got never eel, so it is fishing. Ah, but uh, sadly not for what we want. So, 
Back to the drawing board again. Peter Crab. What I'm, I'm, I'm using two crab at the minute. <laughs> at the end of the day, I'm not mucking around here. I want to get some scent out, and I also want that monster smut. So. Two smaller crabs, but they're not massive crab, but it'll create a perfect bait for it, nonetheless. And what I like to do is just give them a sweet squeeze, guys. Just get some of that scent out. Let's help it do its thing when it's uh, in the water there. So I'm going to uh, slide the, um, the bait down like so. Bottom hook in like that. I'm going to get the top hook put through the top end of the bait. Okay. And we'll twist him down into place. So it's both set. We've got a point on both ends. This is lovely. It's what exactly what we want. I'll just lock him in with bait elastic now. They're not massive, massive like baits you'd use for cod, but they're not small baits, which you would use for like gilts. If, like perfect smut baits really you know what I mean it's, you want nothing too small you want to nothing too big but at the end of the day like I said we're going for those big ones it's about up we're up in a day we're not targeting those 10 pound fish you're better trying to target that 20 pound though you know what I mean so at the end of the day that 20 pound fish will smash that bait down and uh, right I'll get one out to the horizon and see if we can get some out So the tide's pushing, literally flooding right up now. We're gonna go down to one rod in a minute. On the ebb, you've got loads of time there and there's not been much tide, so uh, I was trying to get two rods out to take advantage, but we're gonna get pushed right back out in a minute. So what we'll probably do is put my tripod away and then um, just chuck it on one of the other lads in between. Even with seven ounce leads, we're gonna start getting pulled to the right. We're fishing in between two reefs. And uh, if you're not careful where we're fishing now, you can get uh, the fish pulled straight into the reef. We've had a couple of times before. So you've got to be on board with it, really. So one slack line bite. I made the same mistake because I don't know exactly what I had done. Lifted up and just held for the bite. But I should have just dipped into it, I think. The tide's ripping right around through there now, isn't it? Gonna bring this rod in now. Fresh bait. It's tight about to stop pushing us now. So I'll start moving my way over with Adam. out there. Lovely bit of tide. Just too much to fish two rods. Sometimes it's better to fish one properly than two and try to fish them both properly. Depth of water there now. Have everything ready to go. Especially at times like this, it's prime time now, so you want to make sure you've got your baits ready. Just clipping it on. Got 
chance to get them caught up in your net. <laughs> Lovely. Those leads which uh, Luke John's made up, what Gabby gave me earlier on, absolutely perfect for this. Absolutely perfect. I'm going to give him a quick flick. My lead low. It's settled. To be honest, what I'm going to actually do there, I'll walk out on Adam's side because Adam's just spun round, so we can just take turns moving them over each other there. Well folks, we're going to go and have uh, a little dabble over the top of the tide now. Now that Geff and uh, Ads are carried on fishing for the smooth round and the form backs. And me and Gav's going to have a go for a double figure bass. Now, we've had a lot of bass up to where we are at the moment before. We, it's, you're not fishing very far up at all. And uh, basically what it is, with the outcrop of rocks that we're on, everything's like reefy all the way through and there's like a beach opening what goes into pebbles and that and what I've found over the top of the tide that uh, you can it's, it's a good mark to get bass out of now anybody with fish as a Bristol Channel I would say a normal sort of size bass is between four or five pound mark um, it seems to be the, the really when you're fishing up here and you catch a bass it's normally around that sort of size you don't get loads and loads and loads of the schoolies but um, especially we're fishing now, I think the best, best bass I've had off this mark and previously is what six and a half pound. But I know you get double figure fish out of this out of this bay if you fished it enough. So me and Gav are going to go and try and take advantage of it. Now Gav's using a pat, uh, um, a, what you think, fix pat, and uh, I'm going to fish a boat rig, a bit like we we're using for Gilbert Bream last year, last year, last weekend. <laughs> it's been a long day. But it's, it's absolutely scorching. I mean, we couldn't have picked the better venue, really. The, the breeze is right over the top of us. You're not even feeling it here. And um, the only thing that hasn't happened is the fish. We've had, we've had fish, but conger eels, dogfish, and uh, not else to shout about, really. But hopefully one of the lads can pull either a smooth round in or a form back, and me and Gas can... Uh, me and Gas? Me and Gav. It has been a long day. <laughs> and uh, hopefully... I oh, know, mate. It has. But very warm. It's those waders, I think. He's down there before. It's a little bit breezy. He's got the hoodie on and that, and it's uh, it is warm. But uh, Adam's going down to take a dip, I think. Looks like it, anyway. Fair play to him. Fair play to him. But we'll go through the rig. So basically, what I've got here is the wrong rig. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant, lads! I will go in my box now. I've been up since four o'clock this morning, as you might be able to see. It's been a long, long week, and I've got the wrong rig. I'm not even going to bother at doing an outtake. I'm just going to leave this in here. So, uh, yeah, it'd be a little bit of humour for everybody, I respect. But as you can see, it's one of the joys of the VIP. You get to see it all. You get to see it all. Now, in my bag here somewhere, I thought the size of hook was wrong. Here, here we go. That's it. That's it. So what I've got is a bolt rig. Okay. So it's, it's basically, it's only short. But the only difference I'm going to do from what I've done last weekend when we went gilting is I'm going to, I'm going to fix on a rotten bottom. All right, that's the only thing I'm going to do differently. I know Gav, he's gone for a fixed lead, but I am going to, I am going to go for a, a rotten bottom because it saves me carrying him all the way back to the car for a start if I lose him. It's got the joys of that. And plus, if I do get a big fish on and it decides to dive down, because there is a lot of broken ground out there, I know I'm going to lose the lead. So I'm going to set this rig up now. Right. There we go. Scissors are there. Lovely, lovely. Bit of dinner in a minute, I think. It's scorching. I mean, scorching. Could have picked a better day for it, really. It's just a fish I've been um, played ball. 
Can't have it all though, can't have it all. I've got to be honest, I'd rather it be raining though. And having a, having a few fish out. Right, so. Cut that off there. One knot. Two knots. Three knots. I'm going to go for a seven ounce lead here. Yeah? Actually, I believe they're eights. These are eights. Oh, it might. Oh, it might. <laughs> All right. So I know this is going to be set in the place. Now, I ain't going to muck around now. I've got, I've got a nice place to sit. I've got a nice place to jump down and grab the rod if we need to. And um, I'm going all full bore. So it's an incoming tide. We've got a couple of hours now to make the most of it. And uh, while there's a depth of water, I mean, I've had bass down where I'm fishing at the moment in literally no water, a foot of water. You don't need a lot of water for them. They're coming straight into that bay to feed up, like crabs and other bits and pieces. So just make the most of it, innit? But hopefully, the way I'm seeing this boat rig now is that there is going to hit and it's going to go, hopefully set the lead, the hooks. I'm going to lose the lead and it's just going to have the fish on it. Now I've got a 7-0 chinu and a 6-0 chinu on there. And I'm going to be using whole squid baits, whole squid baits to try and uh, tempt one of these fine silver bars out today. So let's get this all set up and then I'll go through the bait up. Right guys, for the bait up, now, you can use anything and what this basic setup we're doing now when you're rock fishing off of any rocks, you normally would get bass, it's pretty much, you pretty much get bass everywhere really, um, but obviously where we're fishing, you guarantee to get them um, bait wise, you, if you spend enough time targeting them down here, and you, mackerel, peeler crab, ragworm, lugworm, mackerel, it all work. Literally everything would work for it. But we're using some prime fresh squid from uh, Hooker's Baits there, which has been kindly supplied. And uh, basically what we're gonna do is, I've got the big hook, so I'm gonna go straight down through the body as so. Okay. And then I'm gonna pull that down through the head so right down through the squid itself and I'm going to put it right in through the middle of where the eyes are. All right. And I'm going to pull that hook up there now like that. And then the main thing is keeping that hook point proud. Low just said. Now I'm going to keep it. I'm not cast any. If I was banging them out, same as all of us, we'd be cutting them off now. But there was uh, bits on the bottom are perfect. Nice whole squid bait. It's a big bait we're fishing at the same time, but big baits, big fish, as a wise Welshman used to say. All right, so that's that. That's perfect. That's my squid bait. And then, all I'm going to do then is get the other top hook and bring it down to the bottom of the bait, top of the bait, sorry. that in like so all right I'm gonna pull tight on that now so I've got big seven on the bottom six on the top and hopefully that's gonna do the business and get us a bass we want last thing to do now is cast him out so you can see Gav's rig here fixed pat how are you finding these little trident bits mate I like them you like them yeah yeah see I, I like all my rigs um what we call it mate, do you know what I mean? Slim lined, trimmed. And I find with this, you know, with that, you don't get nothing more slim lined than that like, you know what I mean? Definitely not. It's and the, you know the components are well made, you know, I've not had any issues, I've never had any not undo the job as supposed to. It's basically to. fixed up and over, isn't it? it was, yeah, that's yeah. what it is. But then obviously it's a, you know, it me allows me to clip it and cast it. And which you just needed. Yeah, yeah, and then at the end of the day it's the fixed part that what I wanted to fish. Yeah. Obviously rotten right bottom on the end. Yeah, it's got nice prime, always make sure the hook points are proud. See if we can get some bass. 
So, rig um, sort all gone through. Baits all gone through. Equipment I'm using exactly the same as I was using before on my rod. But I've just put a sea line variety on there. Loaded with 25 pound main line. Nice heavy shock leader. We'll see if we can both get a fish out. Hang on. So I do, isn't it? Both in the same region, just as the bell's coming through. We've both got them side by side, literally metres apart, I would say. Got to hope that bass comes through now and swipes that bait up. I'm a long one. Yeah. We're in the wrong hood. <laughs> Oh, what? Oh, mm. No, you said not have to go to it. Oh, I could go. Oh, I could go. Oh, your leg went. Yeah. Same again. <coughs> A little bit closer this time. Let's let me drag a little bit.
Well folks, that was our day. Unfortunately, high water now, and uh, it's, just, it's just not one of those days, I think. As they always say, when the wind's coming from the east, the fish bite least. And uh, the Pretty saying is not Rob. more true. So uh, we're gonna pack up now and make our way back to the car. But uh, I hope you enjoyed the session. I was there a few fish and a bit of banter, a bit of humor along the way. And uh, look forward to seeing you in the next episode.